But first, I want to talk about what I consider the most shameful fact about Australia in 2020, and that's the staggering rates of abuse and neglect suffered by Indigenous women and children. The fact that Indigenous women are 35 times more likely to be hospitalised due to domestic violence than other Australian women should be the focus of intensive coverage and a source of great shame for all of us. We are not talking about 10 or 20% higher rates of abuse or even 100%. We are seeing Indigenous women hospitalised at a rate that is 3,500% higher. The rate is even higher in some communities, according to researchers. Curtin University's Hannah McGlade wrote in 2016, in the Northern Territory, the rate of hospitalisation is up to 86 times higher for Aboriginal women. In Central Australia, this figure is 95 times. Domestic violence is not just a crisis in Indigenous communities, it is an epidemic and it deserves far greater national attention. And yet, most activists prefer to focus on changing the anthem, the flag and the Australia Day holiday, rather than talk about an issue that is literally a matter of life and death. Just as bad as ignoring the issue is the propensity of the left's activist class to excuse the violence and blame everyone except the violent perpetrators. And that's precisely what the Diversity Council Australia did this week when it posted the following quote on its official Twitter account. Statistics show that First Nations women experience higher rates of family violence than other women. But this is a complex issue, stemmed from issues of colonialisation, trauma from displacement and legacy of intergenerational trauma. So there you have it. Forget about the plight of the victims or holding their tormentors to account. Let's blame the colonisers. Why aren't Indigenous women afforded the same sympathy as other victims? And why, when the astronomical rates of abuse are mentioned, they are rationalised with inane explanations about the trauma of white settlement, as if there was no violence against Indigenous women before the First Fleet arrived? It was good to see some prominent Aboriginal voices stand up against the nonsense being put forward by Diversity Council. Our good friend Jacinta Price wrote, Thanks, Diversity Council, for insulting Aboriginal women victims of abuse by continuing to peddle ideological fantasy as opposed to fact. Doing your part to keep the victims silenced and the perpetrators victimised. Indigenous artist Bindi Kolchoka told the Diversity Council, you are contributing to and enabling a culture of silence and blame that allows the perpetrators of violence to take no responsibility for their actions. And Dr Anthony Dillon said, the term complex issue is often a euphemism for the true reasons are inconvenient or I don't like the facts. Would anyone like to say to an Aboriginal woman whose man has knocked her front teeth out, it's okay, it's not his fault, transgenerational trauma made him do it. The Diversity Council should be ashamed of its stance. But then again, this is the same body that lectures Australians about the evils of using the word guys and charges organisations, including many taxpayer-funded state and federal departments and agencies, upwards of $1,800 per hour to peddle woke nonsense, like the dangers of non-inclusive terms such as mum. <laughs> Perhaps they are beyond shame.